that they are changing my voice. I urge you all to not be racist and to define racism in a morally precise way and to stop playing stupid about scientific racism and all the forms of racism we see going on. I urge you all to interpret things correctly and not in a sort of propaganda or theater arts way. I haven't seen anybody in my life, except for me, interpret the Bible correctly. You all break down into camps and you have individual misconceptions and what have you. You don't keep the greatest commandment, which is loving God with all your heart. We see something going on here that's similar to what's going on there. Various white Jews and LGBT groups have grouped together and law enforcement, the military, and the intelligence apparatus, they're helping them persecute me, but because I'm righteous. People in Gaza are people who are not obeying God through me, so I don't count them as righteous, but I do not approve of people being starved to death and raped and abused and coerced, and we know these things go on in various ways. We know that the CIA and other organizations work with various human trafficking groups and the media to create a certain narrative. That's like politics one-on-one. If you don't truly understand that, you would be lost in politics if you were to go to Washington. And everyone knows that. So it's stupid to play stupid about it and scream that I'm not being fair or something. It's stupid. I get treated in a way that's very similar. They vandalize my stuff. They fume me, they poison me, and they're protesting, right? They're settlers, set, set. The deity of evil, Baal, a.k.a. Baal is his um, Middle Eastern equivalent, okay? They're settlers, okay? The opposite of Horus, who's the deity of African martial arts. Royal African Falcon, morally precise martial arts. It's the, the Egyptians' way and the Ebo's way of trying to say God, God and his son. Okay, God's son, who embodies the principle of good, the principles of God, versus the principles of evil, government, greed, racism, tribalism, selfishness. Are they harming innocent people because they think it's right? No. Or relatively innocent, mind you, because they're cheating me out of my right to lead. And I don't believe that those people were here, that they would obey God through me. There, there are Muslims in America, and they do not obey God through me. And some inevitably are from Palestine, I'm sure. So I don't believe that they're innocent, but certainly their suffering is rather heartbreaking and it's wrong for people who do not obey God to cause them to suffer just out of sheer greed. Okay. I've seen videos in the past about settlers, you know, basically acting like they're they're demonic. And I see it as some kind of gimmick by the globalists and the nationalists. Right? They want people to hate each other, whites to hate Jews and vice versa. They want people over the world to hate each other and to be divided for evil and then to unite for evil one day is their stated argument, right? A new evil order of the world, secular, profane, the novos ordo seclorum, right? Secular, right? Outside of the divine order. Why? Because the people doing it are these certain types of racist white Jews and LGBT families, okay? And there's token minorities among them too. And they know that their patriarchal lines would never be chosen by God ever, ever, ever. Why? Because they come from a long line of people that did the wrong thing. And God would not establish a moral order on this planet from a long line of people that did the wrong thing. It would not happen. Look at Christ's birth in the Bible in their own story. It's miraculous, right? There's, there's a divine father and there's a mother who's in complete submission to God. Okay? And that is not going to happen again. Why? Because we're at the end, and I am the idea that Christ is superimposed on. I'm the top martial artist ever. Hebrews and Afro-Asiatic language for holy people, right? That's the idea. I'm the holiest person. I'm black. My mom is, see, I'm a mulatto. My dad is black. My mom is uh, Caucasian, right? Afro-Asiatic, okay? It's a thin line between an Asian and a white person in many ways. Okay, and then there's Middle Asia, there's the Semites of the Middle East, and some of these people we know are more from like Crete and Greece and so on and so forth. You get certain kind of mixtures when you do the DNA test. So it's basically referring to an African warrior line in a certain way mixed with, you know, something else. Like they didn't need you, right? These, this was a mixed place. Hebrew is an Afro-Asiatic language, okay? The languages of uh, Egypt were in the same area. They communicated well with the people from Canaan. It's pretty straightforward because Canaan, a.k.a., you know, what would eventually become Israel, is right next to Egypt. 
Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod, Nimrod founded Babylon, Abraham is from the Babylonian Empire, Yer, Chaldea, Abraham. I brought this up many times in my video, just like Jacob means to supplant and to overreach and so on and so forth, right? And the, the Jews in the story are doing the wrong thing, okay? Almost across the board, you know, Moses means to draw, to draw of water. Abraham has something to do with Ham. It means the offspring of Ham one way or another, okay? The, the spiritual offspring of Nimrod. Now, a lot of rabbis are racist and they don't want to admit this, right? To say that he's not connected to Nimrod is like saying he's not connected to Noah. It's utter rubbish, right? Is Noah, Ham, Shem, Japheth. Shem didn't do anything of note, right? It's later on in the story that Abraham and his descent is not all of Shem, right? So Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod. Nimrod founded Babylon and he, he established himself as the mightiest warrior line before the Lord. That's what Genesis 10, 8 through 9 is about. And then Abraham is trying to follow in his footsteps. That's why they say it's a proverbial saying in Proverbs, is a book in the Bible, mind you, where it says, like Nimrod, a mighty warrior before the Lord, right? An African spirit, okay? Ham, Cush, Nimrod, okay? And Cush is not Mizram. Mizram is Egypt, and it's founded by Ham and Cush as well, okay? But Cush is below that, right? Sub-Saharan Africa is what it's talking about, okay? Pretty straightforward. And we see this with the Martin Luther King Day. And it's not, you know, there's no white Jewish or LGBT day in America, which is like the most multicultural country in the world. OK, so, for example, if I had a bunch of sugar and I had a bunch of salt and I had a bunch of dirt and I had a bunch of uh, grass and I put it in some place. OK, and I, I put it in a, in a bucket. You'd say that's the sugar, that's the salt, that's the grass, that's the dirt, etc. Why? Because you would be able to tell what's what. OK, so the original container is Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod. It's that line right there. That's the, the, the substance of God. OK, then it goes into the Middle East. Right. And the Abraham's like, I want to be taught by that. I want to be. And he tries to get taught by that. And we see that it says the kingdom of heaven will be taken away um, from a people. Excuse me, the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to a people who will perform its works, right? The first will be last and last will be first. Well, who was the first mighty warrior for the Lord? Nimrod. What, where is he from? Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod. Nimrod found in Babylon, so he's from the Cushites. I'm from the Cushites. So the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And there's other applications of that saying as well. Now, when you look at this, you might say, well, these, that's a stretch. That's a stretch. That's a stretch. What's well, in the boundaries of righteousness and justice? In a nutshell, Proverbs 16, 12 says the throne is established in righteousness. Okay. Now, what does this have to do with the ambush of the, of the caravan? Well, who gives a shit about the ambush of the fucking aid caravan compared to Christ being here? First and foremost, that's part of you people's problem. You don't have your priority straight. Secondly, okay. All you people are distracted by these things. People are suffering all over the world. People are getting raped and killed. Food's getting poured out, so to speak, all over the world. But you're focused on that. Why? Because you worship the self. You worship the flesh. You worship the propaganda and the psychology and the theater arts. Which means you worship the devil. Selfless and serving God versus selfish, right? See flesh. Selfish. Selfish. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, put in the comments. Obviously, no matter what state I'm in, the throne is established through righteousness. You know what he call a sniveling fucking cowardly worm who would say, well, they're persecuting him. So I'm not going to follow the king God set apart as the king of kings and the top martial arts. That's called a fucking coward. Okay. And in the spiritual realm, he will be brought in front of me. And their souls will cook to the extreme. Now, what were you saying on the earth? What the fuck were you saying? I was saying, because you're persecuted, shut the fuck up. Now, how many of you think that I was too harsh? I apologize if that part disturbs you, but I decided to keep it because I think it does a good job of showing how serious this is. And few things show how much someone is angry as cursing, as cursing does. We see in the Bible, Christ calls the Canaanites dogs at the time, right? And then the Canaanite woman surprises him and, and he grants her wish. Um, the Jews by John the Baptist, I believe was, are called a brood of evildoers. And so it is in Isaiah 1, okay? So people are being called names, okay? Jesus calls um, uh, Peter Satan, right? 
or Satan in Peter, right? The part of him that's given into Satan, what have you, the spirit of Satan. He says, you know, you're a stumbling block to me. Get away from me, Satan, which is a very harsh thing to say to somebody, right? Okay. So if you think I've been too harsh, please put in the comments. Keep in mind that, you know, I was raised, you know, in California, right? There's a lot of gang members here. You know, when I was growing up, very serious people. And I don't live that far from Oakland. Okay, people from L.A., you know, frequent this area so much that part of, you know, what we call Serenios, these gentlemen from Southern California who are in gangs, um, they wear L.A. hats, right? So that culture kind of permeates. It kind of affects here and it kind of overlaps. And, and so... You know, I grew up a very serious person, right? Playing basketball at the park, what have you. Um, I hung out with uh, various groups of people, right? But wisdom is proven right by her deeds. So I think that that part will help a lot of people who aren't so, you might say, square or whatever, kind of see that I'm right, okay? That God is a warrior and, you know, even in this reduced uh, state, I'm a 42 years old, I've been sabotaged and poisoned for a long time, that, you know, you can still see that I don't tolerate evil, okay? Like the sun doesn't tolerate matter approaching it, okay? It burns it up. I don't tolerate evil. And I don't like what they're doing in Gaza. I do think that it's, it, it is important. It matters. When I said that who cares about that compared to Christ coming back? Okay, it was for that purpose to get you to understand how serious this is. Not to take away from their suffering uh, and their struggle and hardship over there. Again, in the name of God, I command the Jews to treat those people fairly, to treat everyone fairly. I command everybody to obey God through me and to treat people fairly. And let's form a moral committee. Okay, and let's solve problems in the world. Let's stop creating problems. People starving in 2024 is a ridiculous and outrageous and stupid and foolish and crazy problem to have. But you people create that problem so you can control people sexually, so you can act important and act like wizards telling people what to do. What's wrong? Just because you're not as tough or as tall or as handsome or as, as whatever your issue may be as somebody else doesn't mean you should act the way you are. Okay, Character is what makes someone great. Righteousness, justice, wisdom doesn't matter if you look uglier than Schmeagel. doesn't matter if you're the most unhealthy person on the planet. You should be cultivating character and you should boast in the Lord, in the divine order, and in your character. That's not an absence of humility. That is putting a lamp on a sand saying, this is what's important and I'm glad I'm a man of character. I'm glad I'm righteous. I'm glad I didn't buckle. Okay? If you think that I don't care about people starving, you've lost your mind. You've literally lost your mind. Okay? The rich shouldn't be playing God and causing the poor to suffer. People should be doing the right thing. And they should be ready to die at the drop of a hat and ready to have their whole family die on the drop of a hat at the drop of a hat for what is right. Okay? God giveth and God taketh away. And I put my life completely in God's hands, not the churches, not the government, not anybody else. God Almighty, all-knowing, all-good, all-powerful, no games, no psychology, no trickery, no foolishness. As usual, I'll continue to proceed in this warrior spirit of God down the path, wherever it may take me. I accept the course. I accept everything that God has given me. I am blameless. I am not a human being in my soul that I could change my mind. I'm going forward with righteousness and justice all the way through the finish line. And my reward is with God Almighty. But only a fool, only a fool makes it harder for me while I'm here. Thank you.